Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Fenway Park. This is Mark Fidrich. Now, each time he gets the ball back, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. The first man ever to pitch five career no-hitters. Catch them all, Joe! I don't believe what I just saw! Another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a fair-handed catch! Ricky goes, a pitch stick, and he's going to have it. Leaps high of the air, and he's got it! Let it be said that number eight, Cal Ripken Jr., has reached the unreachable star. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself, myself the, luckiest the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face earth. of the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we invite you to rise. We invite you to rise. Hey, fans. Welcome to the Daily Rewind. My name's Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. The Daily Rewind is brought to you by ThisDayInBaseball.com. ThisDayInBaseball.com is a treasure chest full of baseball events. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat in every milestone and oddball event you can ever imagine in between. I'm surprised at the events I find every day. Have you ever wondered how many home runs were lost to weather? Or how many home runs were lost to game conditions? Well, we have that. Just look under the Lost Home Runs catalog on thisdayinbaseball.com and you'll find it. There's over 200 different events. That's kind of a cool one to look up. And it's a lot more than just a written word. We have thousands of videos, audio, and images to go with all the stories. So today's episode is about March 27th. And on March 27th, 1879, Milla Huggins is born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Huggins, a second baseman adept to getting on base, will lead the National League in walks four times. He'll score 100 or more runs three times and regularly collect 30 or more stolen bases with an OBP near 400. He would be the perfect money ball player, wouldn't he? He will start as a player manager with the St. Louis Cardinals before heading to the Yankees in 1918. Huggins will lead the Yankees to six American League pennants and three World Series titles. In his Murderer's Row Club, which will win an amazing 110 games in only a 154-game season, will sweep the 1927 World Series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. It will be considered one of the greatest teams in baseball history. Huggins will eventually be selected to the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee in 1964. Now, unfortunately, Huggins had passed away in 1929, so finding any audio on him was a little difficult. So uh, we're going to bring you something a little different. I'm going to recap day two of the Stratomatic season, as I said I would do every day, because uh, I've already given you the history of how much I love Stratomatic, and I grew up playing it, and uh I just think it's a cool thing to be able to do because we're missing baseball right now to have something to look at. Uh, I'm going to actually bring you Stan Musial after the recap. So that is a real treat. The March 27th highlights. Uh, day two, it's a little bit of an abbreviated schedule as it normally is to start the year. Um, but there was definitely some excitement. Uh, we'll start off in, out in L.A. where Corey Sager will hit two home runs for the Dodgers and lead them to a 4-1 to victory over the Giants. Bueller will scatter three hits over seven to pick up the victory, and Justin Turner will also pick up two hits, including his first home run of the season. For the Phillies, Zach Wheeler had a successful debut in Miami, pitching six innings and only allowing one run with seven Ks and getting the win for the Phillies. An old friend, Bryce Harper, bangs out three hits for the Phillies in their 3-1 to victory. At Petco, Ryan McMahon goes 3-for-4 with three RBIs, including his first home run of the season, to lead the Colorado Rockies over the Padres 6-2. to In a much-anticipated game, World Series hero Anthony Rendon will hit his first home run as an Angel, but they will fall 4-2 to against the Astros. And as an FYI, there were no hit batters in this game. Over in Oakland, Sean Mania and three Oakland relievers will combine for a one to nothing shutout over the Twins. I mean, it is Oakland. You have to know there's going to be a lot of relief pitches no matter what the score is. But uh, they are going to, uh, it's going to be a tough start for the Twins coming off the division championship last year, starting off 0 and 2. And amazingly, the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays 8 to 6. The Sox will hit three home runs, and Raphael Devers will collect his third home run of the, of the season already. 
Michael Chavez will go four for four, and Nathan Avaldi is going to pick up the win for the Sox. Atlanta will top the D-backs three to one, and the Rangers beat the Mariners three to one as well. Now you can see the box scores, player comments, and more on thisdayinbaseball.com. Go to thisdayinbaseball.com slash 2020 simulation and you can check out all the all the box scores and much more information. Now, let's hear Stan Musial. You're listening to a show from the Nostalgia Old Time Radio Station at parango.com. Also a member of the Blueberry Podcasting Community. Best old time radio from people you trust. The Radio Nostalgia Network, where the oldies are still young. Welcome once again to the Big Band Serenade. This week our featured player is Stan Musial. Number six for the player is Stan Musial. Number six for the St. Louis Cardinals became known by his fans as Stan the Man. Let's look at his career from 1941 to 1963. Shortly before the Second World War, a baseball legend begins to unfold in the steel town of Donora, Pennsylvania. Stan Musial. Three times National League Most Valuable Player, St. Louis Cardinals. National League All-Star Selection, 23 years. Member 3000 Hit Club. Seven times National League Batting Champion. Lifetime Batting Average of 331. Today, Musial is Senior Vice President of the St. Louis Cardinals and a successful restaurateur. Former Green Bay great Paul Horning talked with Musial at Horning's Manhattan apartment and once again at the airport where Musial was awaiting his flight back to St. Louis. As they explored the legend of the baseball player who explored the legend of the baseball player who was known to all as the man. Stan, when we did the show with Mickey Mantle, I asked Mickey who were the, some of the greatest natural hitters he's ever seen. And he said, well, there was two that I can really think of was, of course, Ted Williams and Stan the Man. Now, your peekaboo style, it was called, crouching back deep into the box. Was that always a Stan Musial trait, to, even when you were young? Uh, no, it wasn't, Paul. Uh, I always had, uh, had a normal stance, but I always wanted to hit 300 in the major leagues. So when I joined the Cardinals, I kind of crouched down to cut down the strike zone. I was just punching that ball to left field. Although my stance was very unorthodox, I felt very, very comfortable. But the most important thing about a stance is when you come out of that stance, to have a good level swing. And the follow through, of and, course. Right, right. So it's, it's uh, almost like addressing a golf ball. The pros tell you just to get comfortable. Right. And do your thing. You do your thing. You actually created your own strike zone. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, when that ball was, uh, was outside, I kind of strode into the ball and hit the ball to left field. If the pitch was inside, I tried to hit the ball at all times to right field. So I didn't try to pull too much. I was. Uh, Spray hitter. Of course, in 24 years, you have, your average was over 330, one of the great uh, hitters of all time. And Stan, we've got some film here that I think exemplifies just that. This is against the Dodgers. The left-hander at the stretch, here's his pitch. Musial takes him the other way and bounces the ball through on the left side. Might get the run home, he does. The Dodgers, for many years, had great teams. We had battled one another and had great, uh, great games and uh, very challenging uh, series, and uh, they were tough. The Dodgers had great teams. Tight ball game tonight. Ball game tonight. The Cardinals and the Dodgers. The batter is Musio here in St. Louis, and Stan goes after the fastball and drives it deep and far up on the porch. A home run for Musio. Every game was uh, like a World Series. Campanello, Reese, Snyder. Great, great ball players. Great, uh, Robinson team. and, uh, yes, great pitchers over there, too. Who's that young guy? <laughs> I looked younger, did I? 
Musio hits a long drive. It's going way, way back in deep left center, and it's gone. That was a great game against the Dodgers. There was a lot of excitement, always a great uh, series we had going with the Dodgers. Never a dull moment. And actually, in Brooklyn is where you got the name Stan the Man. Yes, so uh, uh, every time we played there, I did such great hitting in Brooklyn that uh, the fans always used to say, uh, here comes that man, here comes that man. So uh, pretty soon it was, it was Stan the Man. There's one. There's one of the great hitters of all time, Ted Williams. He was a very scientific hitter, studied hitters. Uh, Did you ever compare pitching. notes, the two of you? Very seldom, uh, because we didn't meet that often except the World Series mm -hmm. time. And Here's a good shot of the crowd. Here's the pitch. Double pump on the lineup. And the pitch. Musial hits a long, towering drive to deep right field, and there's no question about this one. It is gone. A home run into the lower deck. When you hit a home run, you can generally tell by the feel of bat uh, how it was solid it hit, and you could tell how far the ball was going. So I knew that uh, I didn't try to hit home runs. Uh, really, Paul, through my career, I was just trying to meet the ball. Meet the ball. And uh, once in a while, uh, you know, you tell the youngsters today that really hit the long ball. Would you tell them still to try to meet the ball and never go for the home run? I would say that uh, if you uh, just try to meet the ball and have the power that you'll hit more home runs not trying to hit home runs because if you're trying to hit home runs, if you're trying to hit home run you're swinging too hard you're taking your head off the ball and uh, moving quite a bit there's Enos Slaughter one of the great cardinal ball players a great hustler he loved to play and Enos was a great cardinal he really was Enos bangs it through for a base hit Whitey Karowski at the play here's the pitch the third baseman bangs it hard it's a base hit and Karowski's going to try to stretch it into a double it's going to be close at second base and he makes it. We had a lot of speed in those days. We had a young hustling club. This term more bunting the ball. We bunted more often in those days. And that's Red Chaney, sir, my roomie. And you know how uh, important good roomies are. That's and, right. Uh, Especially Red, after so many years. Red's our manager. You're right. He's, he's, he's a great, great guy. Red. Red and I were there together about 10 years. Musial hits a line shot to right center. Shane Deese will score easily. Now, this is Willie Mays getting his 3,000 hit. Yes. Stand a man was on hand. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it. Uh, Willie's been a great uh, ball player all these years, and uh, he's had a great career, and I was uh, happy to be able to be out there to see this. Uh, uh, Willie get his 3,000 hit, and it's a great feeling to get 3,000 hits. It takes a lot of years, and you've got to be healthy and play uh, and be fortunate enough to get hurt. And Willie had a great career there and got 3,000 hits, and it's a great thrill uh, to uh, reach this goal. It was a uh, it was nice occasion to uh, and he's another natural hitter i mean oh yes. Willie did everything uh, effortless well Willie could beat you you know with his bat with his glove uh, one of the best all-around ball players i ever saw really with his uh, bat glove and speed so he was a good all-around ball player for many many years i was uh, coming up to pinch hit here in chicago uh i wasn't due to play this game and uh, i needed one more hit for three thousand freddie hutchison our manager was saving me for st louis uh, the next day but an occasion arose in the game where I was needed to pinch it. And the crowd realizing the drama of the moment. Musial going for number 3,000. Right-hander set. Here's the pitch to Musial. Hits a fly ball down the left field line that's going to fall in for a base hit. Musial reaches number 3,000. He's going to make it a double. He goes to second, standing up, and the crowd roars. You know, Stan, uh, during your career, you came through for over 20 years when you made the big play. We're going to come back and talk about this in just a moment. Uh, it would seem to me, during your career, you came through when you made the big play. Well, uh, it, it would depend on the situation of the game and uh, what you had to do. And uh, sometimes you try to hit a home run, and uh, a lot of times you just try to get a base hit. So, as you say, it's the uh, conditions and situations uh, uh, changes, uh, and you try to uh, build yourself up to these situations. Usually not familiar crouch up at the plate, waiting for his pitch. He gets it. Oh, ho, ho! that one's out of here. Over the bunting into the seats, and Stan, the man, does it again. Home run, Stan Musial. Uh, of course, some of your greatest days were in all-star games. And... Stan Musial loosening up for the little pepper game before the big ball game. Well, we come to a big moment of this ball game now. The batter Musial. Here's the pitch. Stan gets all of it. He takes a look at it. He knows where this is going. 
back and over the fence for a Musial home run. Musial got every bit of it. Stan the man jotting around the bases and he'll have a reception committee. A tremendous shot and he knew it the moment he hit it. Walter Austin congratulates Musial. And the All-Star game is won by Stan the man. Oh, here's the man they've been waiting for. The most durable All-Star of them all, Stan Musial. This is a All-Star game. This is a... All-star game in Yankee Stadium. I was about 40 years old, and I got a great, great kick out of hitting this home run because it was in New York and the All-star game. I always enjoyed playing in New York. They're great fans and love baseball. And uh... All right, New Zealand's all set up there in the batter's box. What an opportunity to be a hero. He may be. That one's got home run written all over it. Over the fence, into the seats. A home run right over Roger Maris' head there. Stan the man delivers once again in all-star fashion. Receiving the plaudits of the crowd, a great, great all-star, Stan Musial. Great spot for Musial. Go ahead, run on base. Pitcher sets, delivers. So does Musial. Pulls a pitch into right field. That'll score a run. Uh, this is the old polo grounds. Yes. You loved to hit there, didn't you? Yes, the fences were short, and I didn't try to hit a ball hard there. I tried to just pull the ball at all times down the right field line. It was 260 down the line, and all you had to do was get a ball in the air and uh, it'd, go, go, uh, it'd go, go for a home run. So uh, this is back in San Francisco again. Juan Marichal is pitching, and uh, he was a great pitcher, had a screwball, and had great control. Musial at bat, up here in a spot where he can deliver another clutch blow. He swings, he connects. Runner at third, scores easily, and the Cardinals are ahead, one to nothing. On base, Marshall delivers. Musial lashes out another. This is a drive, and this one may get out of here. Over the fence at Candlestick Park, and Stan is delivered. This whole run off Juan Marshall. Yes, this is in San Francisco. I like San Francisco. It's a great city, and uh, they play a lot of day ball. Play a lot of day ball there, and the wind blew to right field, so it, it has somewhat of a help. A hero's welcome for Stan the man as he stops on home plate, scoring behind two runners. You know, Stan, uh, in baseball, of course, the brushback pitch, the bean ball, has become very, very prominent. It's been a controversy for years. How many times did you know going up the bat uh, that you were going to be brushed back? Oh, uh, every once in a while, yeah, Paul, they would, uh, they would uh, brush you back and hit you on occasions. And, of course, the pit uh, pitch is trying to protect the hitter, uh, particularly if, uh, you know, you hit somebody on their side. So it... Uh, Here's, there's, there's Willie Mays getting hit here. Uh, I'm sure that uh, something uh, went on there, whereas uh, he might have been trying to pitch him inside and the ball got further in there. But uh, every once in a while, the pitchers get heated up in the heat of battle and, uh, you know, hit a guy. And they, they in turn, hit, hit one of our guys. So it's uh, part of the game. But as long as nobody gets, serious, nobody gets seriously hurt, why, uh, that's the main thing. Now it's pitcher versus pitcher. Gibson at the plate. Marichal delivers. Down goes Gibson. And out goes the umpire. He is charging Marichal. Marichal's coming off the mound to face the umpire. Alvin Dark runs out. He's going to try to argue on behalf of his pitcher, but I'm afraid it's too late. Marichal is being thumbed out of this ball game. This is our last game in St. Louis. Jim Maloney is pitching, and uh, this is my final game. And the first time up, I struck out, and I was worried about uh, getting a hit in my last game or two, but I did come through with two hits. Exactly the same way you started 24 years ago. Yes, was, I felt like making the comeback after those two hits. <laughs> <laughs> this is our locker room coming upstairs, and uh, for the last time, and I hated to give it up. You gave up, you're giving up something you love to do all these years, and baseball is a great game, and I enjoyed it. And of course, for any baseball, for any baseball player, the greatest honor that you can achieve is your introduction into the Hall of Fame. Yes, it was a great thrill, Paul, to reach uh, Baseball's Hall of Fame. It took uh, many, many years of playing, and uh, it's a dream and an ambition, and uh, when you get in the Hall of Fame, it's a really great thrill, and all my friends and family were there, and uh, I was uh, quite honored by uh, uh, baseball, getting into Baseball's Hall of Fame. After playing 24 years, I took a little time giving this speech because uh, I had a lot of things to cover. So it was uh, it was a hard uh, and difficult speech to make. 
This is not too difficult to take, though. And I don't think there's any other active baseball player who has a statue after him at Bush Stadium. It's a beautiful, beautiful honor. The St. Louis uh, fans and the newspapers and the press and radio and everybody honored me there in St. Louis at this uh, wonderful statue, and I'm very honored by, by this uh, award here. You know, Stan, uh, you know, Stan, uh, I guess when anyone plays any professional sport for over 20 years, traveling becomes a second way of life, and we're going to come back and talk about your travels in just a moment. All right. Understand all the traveling that you did over so many years, did you have any problems at home? Did the wife ever become a little bit perturbed that you were away from home so much? Well, well, not really, because uh, my wife always felt that baseball and traveling kind of went together as part of our life. And of course, uh, while uh, you know, while we're traveling there, the girls are raising youngsters, and uh, so they must be more or less a mother and father while we're on the road, and they must uh, have a lot of dedication and understanding. I think, I think we owe the, owe, the, owe the girls a great deal of gratitude, really, for you know, being both mother and father and raising our youngsters. And I had four youngsters, and I had six grandchildren. I have more time now to enjoy them, and, uh, and we have a great family. Stan, in all your travels, not only, as a, not only as an active baseball player in the United States, but as probably the greatest goodwill ambassador we've ever had abroad as far as baseball is concerned. You also went to Saigon in 1967. I understand that impressed you very much. Yeah, no question about it. It was a very interesting experience visiting our, uh, our troops over there, visiting the bases, talking to the youngsters, showing them movies. Tell them how things were back here in the States, and uh, that was a really uh, quite an experience. And of course, uh, what impressed me more than anything else about uh, uh, Saigon was that the spirit of our youngsters, they, had a, they felt like they had a job to do. Their spirit was really great. I was really impressed with their spirit. And they loved meeting Stan Musial, too. Well, they're great, great fans. They really were. How about Japan? I understand, of course, they're great baseball fans. You went to Japan in 1958, then again in 68 with the St. Louis Cardinals and played the Japanese All-Stars over there. That also must have been uh, quite a trip. Yes, we, uh, in 1958 I was uh, still playing so that, uh, playing so that uh, they would uh, entertain us before a ball game and they were gracious hosts and they'd, they'd take care of our wives and uh, before every game they were showered with many, many guests and the uh, Japanese, uh, they love baseball. They played quite a bit of it, you know, and uh, uh, they have great legs and great ball players, and so uh, baseball in Japan was very interesting. Uh, some of the fans were different than the fans we have here in the United States. You know, here in this country, in New York and Brooklyn, when her uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, we have rabid fans, they yell and holler and or get very emotional. Over in Japan, uh, whenever they see a ball game, they're very quiet and they're very subdued and they don't, they, they don't show their emotion, that kind of... Very serious. Yeah, they take it serious, so that was different. And after, and after you retired in 1963, a great honor was bestowed on Stan the Man. President Lyndon Baines Johnson appointed you as special consultant to head up the physical fitness program. I always believed in physical fitness. Even when I was a youngster, my dad impressed upon me the value of physical fitness. And, uh, of course, then when President Johnson nominated me to work with the fitness program of the country, working with the youth of the country, trying to improve their physical well-being, well, it was a great honor, and it was a great program. It's still a, a great program, going very well, and uh, I think now the United States uh, is conscious of, of fitness. Not only youth fitness, but the middle-aged fitness, and uh, I think the program has done a lot to up upgrade the physical well-being of, uh, of the country. And I guess the original idea had to start with John F. Kennedy. He was very interested in sports and physical fitness. Yes, Pretty good uh, friend of yours. Yeah, well. President Kennedy was a great sports fan. You know, he loved baseball, football. He was in ten at all the games. And uh, I remember, and, uh, I remember one occasion where we played an all-star game here in uh, Washington, and uh, he invited me up to his box before the game and, and in, introduced me to many of his friends and senators. And uh, you know, lucky enough, I was before during the game, I, came, I was called to pinch it, and I got a base yet. <laughs> I was kind of thrilled. Then, then he invited me up to uh, up to the White House the next day. And John was a great guy, and I uh, I was happy to be among among one of his friends. With President Kennedy looking on today, Stan Musial, the hitter, 
Stan digs in. Here's the pitch from the right-hander. Musial lines it into right field for a base hit. Solid shot for Stan Musial to open the inning. And the president enjoys it. Stan, I guess the only thing's left is your goodbye to baseball, which was a great one. The longest playing career of any major leaguer with one team comes to an end as Stan Musial makes his final appearance in a Cardinal uniform September 29th, 1963 at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. 63 at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The 43-year-old Musial retires after spending a quarter of a century in the Cardinal organization and bows out with complete or partial ownership of more than 58 major league records. Even the kids are given special attention in the retirement ceremonies to pay tribute to their hero, Stan Musial, a guy who always found time to sign autographs and give helpful advice to youngsters or better. Ken Boyer, the star third baseman and captain of the Cardinals, presents Musial with a ring showing his uniform number six in diamonds, a number that will never be worn by another St. Louis player, according to August Bush, Jr., the club's president. Baseball has uh, been my life, and I love baseball, I love St. Louis. This is a great organization, and uh, uh, I've had fun all these years, and uh, it's been a great thrill. For me and my family, we want to thank all of my close associates here through the years, why, close associates here through the years, why, for the many, many things you've done for me, and uh, I just want to thank you very much. Dan the Man Musio, once a Major League Baseball star of the highest order, and now a member of the game's Hall of Fame. When Musio retired after the 1963 season, he had set 55 Major League and All-Star records, and had gained membership into the exclusive 3,000 hit club. Today, Musio serves as Senior Vice President of the St. Louis Cardinals, and is a successful St. Louis restaurateur, where he lives with his wife, Lillian. They have a son, Dick, and three daughters, Jerry, Janet, and Jeannie. Long live the man. Long live the man. And long live his legend. All right. I hope you enjoyed listening to Stan Musial. That was a treat. It never gets old listening to a player like that. And you can check out all of today's events on thisdayinbaseball.com slash March 27th. There are over 125 birthdays, passing, and events that happen on March 27th. So you can go there. You can check out the player pages, the events, and a lot more. And you can also sign up for our updates and talk to fans just like you on our forums at thisdayinbaseball.com. And I want to thank you for joining me today on the Daily Rewind. And if you enjoyed the show, my two asks are sharing is caring. If you can share the show, tell a friend, send it in a text, send an email, share it on social media. We'd really appreciate it. That's how we can grow the show. Podcast growth always comes from that type of action. So if you like us, please share us. And secondly, please, please subscribe to the show. And you're going to get new content every time it comes out. And if you have any feedback, you can reach me directly at tdinbb at gmail.com. Now, please don't forget to check out our show notes as well. In our show notes, I'm going to have a link to Stan Usual's page, Miller Huggins' page, March 27th, and the 2020 simulation. So there's lots of really cool stuff there. So I hope you go to the show notes and click on those links. And I'm Tom Hannon. Thank you again for joining me on the Daily Rewind. And we'll be seeing you hopefully soon at the ballpark. Peace.